Albemarle Overture, uh, and it is music written solely for music's sake. Uh, I have a mental story for it. I would love to hear what yours would be for it, but it's pretty much it's beautiful music written in a specific form. Our next piece, however, has a story to it, and it's written by a very famous composer for the wind band genre. Uh, his name is Frank Tichelli, and he's written music for, college, uh, for colleges, universities, honor bands, uh, all over the nation. Cajun Folk Songs is based off of uh, the descendants of the Acadians, a group of early French colonists who began settling in Acadia, which is now Nova Scotia around the 1600s. Um, and although there is a rich Cajun folk song tradition in existence, the music has become increasingly commercialized and Americanized throughout the 21st century uh, and obscuring its original simplicity and directness. In response to that trend, there were these two gentlemen named Alec and John, Alan and John Lomax who traveled to South Louisiana in 1934 to collect and record numerous uh, Cajun folk songs that they put in the archive of folk music in the Library of Congress. By doing that, he opened up the door for Frank D. Kelly to write this piece. This piece, Cajun folk songs, there's two movements. The first movement is called La Belle et le Capitan, and it is about, uh, it is a, tells the story of a young girl who feigns death to avoid um, falling into the hands of this captain, which is, it's sad and kind of in forlorn. It's, uh, but then the second movement's great because she gets away and she lives happily ever after. You'll like that one. That one's called Belle or Beauty. We hope you enjoy Cajun folk songs.
Songs by Frank Kelly. Uh, we have a few announcements to make. Uh, at the very, very end of the show, as I'm sure you've seen by the sign, you have to have a chance to uh, enter a raffle to conduct this fine band in front of you. Uh, last week we had uh, uh, the gentleman who learned really quickly how to lead this band, and I'd like to teach you now too. How many of you know how to conduct using one of these? While the band is getting ready for the next piece, anybody? Well, it's really simple. Uh, for the last piece, The Stars and Stripes Forever, an American staple, you get the opportunity to conduct that group, should, uh, conduct that piece, if you decide to enter into the raffle, or one dollar each, uh, and it's ten for five. I think the person who won last time just went all in and spent like 50 bucks. They really wanted to uh, conduct this group. So, if you have some trepidation about conducting, please put your right hand out in front of you. Oh, everybody, come on, everybody. This is a community band for this reason. Uh, uh, concert in the park. Everybody go to the right, and up, down, up. That's conducting, right? That's called conducting in two, and most of our marches have that feel to them. If you want to increase the speed, you just pick it up a little faster. Watch, ready, and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It works really well. <laughs> Our next piece has another story to it, and this one is a little less, um, maybe macabre is the last one. Uh, this is called Into the Raging River, and it's a tone poem. The music has a story that's written in, and I'd like to read that story to you now. Into the Raging River is a programmatic tone poem for the symphonic band inspired by a whitewater rafting trip on the Great Gowley River in the mountains of southern West Virginia. But the opening of this piece depicts the sunrise as we watch it from the banks of the river. You'll hear that in just a moment. Dawn breaks with a single ray of light that glows with intensity until the entire gorge is bathed in the glorious morning sun. The next section underscores our entry into the river as we launch our raft and begin to run the rapids. The section is full of anticipation, excitement, and sheer joy. After several thrills and spills on the white water, we come across a resting place. The water is calm and we have a chance to take in all of the beauty. The serenity is soon interrupted by the gurgling sounds of the river as we approach more rapids. The time we have to battle the river as it brutally tosses us around begins with adrenaline surging as we approach our final obstacle, a 13-foot class 4 waterfall. This is Into the Raging River.
Go High Band, ladies and gentlemen. Cool. We, uh, we now have the fun opportunity to welcome all the little ones and anybody who's a little one at heart or just wants to come up and march around. Right now is our uh, famous balloon march of the Ohio Summer Band. Uh, you might notice all of these floating devices around you. Uh, we invite our Rotary Club um, members to come on up. We have a special leader of our balloon march, which is going to go ahead and stomp around as we play a couple of fun pieces for you, Power and Glory and Emperor Roca, Spanish March, um, during this time. Thank you. Listen to Tupa Tim, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a balloon, get on up here. So, I just wanted to say uh, welcome, everybody. We are um, honoring one of our Ojai living treasures today. Her name is Whitney Nunez, and she uh, works for Help of Ojai, which many of you probably know about in this town. She works for the Community Assistance Program. She helps many, many families in hundreds of families in Ojai who need assistance in finding places to live and to get things to help their kids grow. And uh, we're just thankful that Whitney has used a lot of personal touch in this, in this um, job and she's really been honored by many people um, her, her peers. So we want to thank Whitney for all her hard work. And uh, everybody who has a balloon, come on up. Let's go for a uh, march. Even if you don't have a balloon, come on up. Come on, please. Last call. Last call, ladies and gentlemen, for the balloon march. We have a nice line coming in there. I see my kids and my cousins. Hi, guys. Hey. All right, here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three.
ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed Festa by one of my favorite composers, Elliot Del Borgo, who was probably one of the most high energy people you've ever met. He, uh, he wrote a lot of music, uh, and during his lifetime, he recently passed away over the past five years, and he left behind quite the hole in the band repertoire. Uh, that was one of his older pieces, but it's pretty exceptional. This one you might recognize a little bit more. This is a classic from the orchestral rep by Johann Strauss. It's called. It's a theme from the Emperor, Walt, uh, Emperor Waltz. It's missing the opening march, and the ending march it just has the beautiful dance melody. Our next piece uh, has not just a story implied, but there's a story told. Uh, we all know this next one. Uh, the story of Peter and the Wolf uh, is from a really excellent composer who decided to, uh, in his compositions, teach about the orchestra and all the different moving pieces in it. In order to do that, we're going to tell a story, but we need help. So I welcome to the microphone uh, Dr. Jim Halverson. Uh, our MC for the evening, who is going to narrate the story of Peter and the Wolf. Round of applause, please. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and walked out into the big green meadow. of a big tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. All is quiet 
chirp the bird happily. Just then, a duck came waddling around. She was glad that Peter had not closed the gate and decided to take a nice swim in the deep pond in the meadow. grass settled next to her and shrugged his shoulders. What kind of a bird are you if you can't fly, said he. To this, the duck replied, well, what kind of a bird are you if you can't swim and dive into the pond? They argued and argued, the duck swimming in the pond and the little bird hopping along the shore. Suddenly, something caught Peter's attention. He noticed a cat crawling through the grass. The cat thought, meow, that little bird is busy arguing. I'll just grab him. Stealthily, the cat crept toward him on her velvet paws. <laughs> while the duck quacked angrily at the cat from the middle of the pond. <laughs> came out. He was upset because Peter had gone into the meadow. It's a dangerous place. If a wolf should come out of the forest, then what would you do? to his grandfather's words, 
Boys like him are not afraid of wolves. The grandfather took Peter by the hand, led him home, and locked the gate. No sooner had Peter gone than a big gray wolf came out of the forest. climbed up the tree. The duck quacked, quack, and in her excitement jumped out of the pond. Oh dear. But no matter how hard the duck tried to run, she couldn't escape the wolf. He was getting nearer and nearer, catching up with her. And then he got her and with one gulp, gulp, swallowed her. how things stood. The cat was sitting on one branch, the bird on another, not too close to the cat. The wolf walked around and around the tree, looking at them with greedy eyes. the closed gate watching all that was going on. He ran home, got a strong rope and climbed up the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree around which the wolf was walking stretched out over the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch, Peter lightly climbed over onto the tree. Peter said to the bird who was sitting in the tree, fly down and circle over the wolf's head. Only take care that he doesn't catch you. Well, the bird almost touched the wolf's head with his wings while the wolf snapped angrily at him from this side and from that side. How the bird worried the wolf how he wanted to catch him. But the bird was clever, and the wolf simply couldn't do anything about it. Meanwhile, Peter made a lasso and carefully letting it down, caught the wolf's tail by the tail and pulled with all his might. <laughs> Feeling him 
himself caught. The wolf began to jump wildly, trying to get loose. <laughs> tied the other end of the rope to the tree. And the wolf's jumping only made the rope around his tail tighter. Just then, the hunters came out of the woods, following the wolf's trail and shooting as they went. Music tells fun stories. This is a really fun evening. We have a, we have another one that goes across the across the decades. This next one is by a really cool piece called "Salute to American Jazz," and it goes through some really cool tunes. Uh, you will hear a night in Tunisia, St. Louis blues. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And Birdland. Now is your last chance, ladies and gentlemen. I they took the sign down to get your raffle ticket to conduct the band. After this, we will welcome to the stage our guest conductor.
Okay, now's the time. Looks like the lights have gone out. We have one more piece for you. Let's find out who is going to get to go home with an Ojai summer band padded in baton today. Alright, we have many tickets. Go ahead and reach in there. Alex is going to pick one. Pick one. Alright. We have four, five, nine, seven, five, five. That way. <laughs> from Tokyo, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause.